All right. All right. We have talked about, what did we talk about? We talked about function templates last time. Uh, we said that whenever you have series of functions, whenever you have series of functions and the functions you have, they all have identical logics and you only change the types of the logic, um, instead of overloading and rewriting your code over and over and over, you can ask the, the, the compiler to write the code for you providing the types. And um, there are two good things about it. Number one, less coding, obviously. Number two was that uh, you don't have all the source unused source code in your executable anymore. When you create functions like this, the code gets compiled, it's added to your executable. If you don't call them, it's just unused piece of data sitting over to doing nothing, right? But with templates, because the functions get generated by compiler on demand, you only have overloads created out of your template if you actually call the functions. If you don't call the function, nothing there, life is beautiful. Right? Are you okay with that? Are you okay with that? All right. Next day, make sure you come to class. Uh, and if you're listening to this, next day, come to class because we're going to talk about the, the final. What, how does it going to work out and what we're going to have, what kind of questions. And hopefully by then I actually decide the questions and I can tell you actually what type of questions you're going to have. Um, <clears throat> okay, so, uh, so we, as we said, we take, the, we take the logic, we take the logic we have, we replace that logic with, uh, we replace the type of the logic uh, with the focus of, uh, with, with, with the, uh, the type of interest, let's put it, and replace those types with, whatever, uh, with a placeholder, and then we'll tell the compiler to replace it, and that was the template. Are we good with this? Right? Okay? No problem now to this point? You okay? All right. So, now, let's th think about uh, complications that might happen if you want to have the same functionality, but the logic inside will not be the same. Let me give you an example. What happens, what happens if if I want to have, so I'm, we know all these things, we, have, we tested this, so I'm just going to remove the things that we don't need. I'm um, just going to remove this test, and I'm going to just put the integer one there to kind of well, remove the clutter. What if I have something like this? Right? So I have a character S1 is Fred, S2 is Soleil. What I want to do is to have the exact same function in here. Pay attention. I want the exact same function to put these things, two things together, create dynamic memory allocation, print it out exactly like that, and return the newly allocated memory to rest. So I want to be able to call the function like this, I want to be able to say over here, res is set to display sum, and in here I'm going to say s1 and s2, right? And I'm going to say c out display sum func returned res. 
But at the end, I have to delete the res because I know res is dynamic. As you see, it's not giving me an error. Why? Because it's character pointer, character pointer, and character pointer, right? So it's going to actually generate that for me. So I'm going to have f, f to be a pointer to a character, s to be a pointer to a character, sum to be a pointer to a character. So I have sum that is pointer to a character equal to address of the first plus address of the second. Add two addresses together, and what happens? It becomes a bigger address. It has nothing to do with what those things are. It goes somewhere in memory, puts it in sum, and returns that sum, and you're going to print some garbage someplace. Do we understand that? Do we understand? So that logic sucks. <laughs> it doesn't work. How can we fix it so it works properly? And that's why I have that utils thingy over here. I'm going to put the utils in here, include the utils. And I think I need to fix the utils because that utils I wrote it a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. So utils, uh, I, I think the namespace over there is still SDDS where the school was SDDS. Is it? Yeah, you see? Control H, change that to Seneca, and uh, ta -ta 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 -ta, current project, replace everything that's, what did I do? Replace everything. Only two. Okay. Um, and now change the capital SDDS to Seneca. There we go. Now we're good. Okay. Uh, let's come back over here. So I'm including. I'm including utils, and I'm going to say using namespace. Uh, Seneca. Let's come down over here. So one way to fix this problem is just to overload display sum. When you overload display sum, and overload is always has, uh, uh, supersedes the template. So what is the, what is the reason that compiler actually uses a template? It sees there is no implementation, looks at that thing, and it finds a match, and it does it. If the cell phone is off and the, uh, let me just turn mine off too. <laughs> it's got to be, where's my cell phone? Oh, there you go. Yeah, so reason I said cell phone is off is that I was hearing notifications from my friend's cell phone over there. Uh, okay. All right. So, yeah. So what we can do over here is to actually write the code for display sum, okay? And the way we want to, so I want to say over here, I'm going to say over here, character pointer, uh, display sum. And I'm going to have character pointer um, f and, uh, well, character pointer s um, a, or no, let's put f. And character, why did I put f and s over there? I don't know. Character pointer s. So essentially, that's F and S, the things are like that. And then in here, I'm going to say, uh, um, what do I do? Character pointer result. And I'm going to say result is equal to null PTR, or make it easy. So do like that. Then I'm going to say if F and S are not null. And at the end, I'm going to say return. Right, so now I'm going to do all the dynamic memory allocation thingy that I have. As you see, the logic is absolutely different from what I have over there. The outcome is going to be the same, but the logic is different to, to maintain the same thing for, because the nature of C string is an awkward thing. C string has nothing to do with any objects, just character array with a null at the end. So we have to fix that problem. How do we fix the problem? I'm going to say, okay, res is set to new character, and then in here I'm going to put ut.str len of f plus 
ut dot str len of s plus 1. So it has space for both of them, right? And then I'm going to say ut dot str copy into res the f. So I'll put that one over there. And I'm going to go ut dot str cat into res from s, correct? That's ur. We need ut. Not that ut. This ut. Are we good? I think that's going to do it. So now it works. It is a completely different thing. It's a, uh, an overload that has the exact same signature as the template, but it's character pointer. Therefore, when the function makes a call to a function that receives two character pointer, it says, oh, it's already implemented. I don't need to implement. It's not going to touch the thing. So life is beautiful. Everything works properly. And we are done. OK? So it's a very valid thing to do. But what's the downside of it? The downside is the same thing as we had for overloads. If I don't call the display sum at line 70, the source code will remain in the executable, right? How can I make this a special case of that template? How can I make this thing to become a special case of that template? Remain a template, but tell to the compiler, say, hey, this is the same template, but a special case. If the display sum comes with character pointer, please use that one instead. OK? So first of all, let's keep this in thing. So we, we're going to say this is OK? So we're going to say this is the overload. So overload special cases of templates function templates. Wow, look at the file name. OK, so, so that's, that's what it's doing. Now, we want to change this. And and we want, we want to make this a template that is a special case of that. OK, before doing that, I want to teach you something. OK? Let's say you are passing two integers to display sum. But C over here is a double. OK? Let's say I have this. All right? So obviously, when the compiler looks at the display sum over here that is returned, it created, it sees two integers. So it goes to the template for int, and it returns an integer, and that's casted to a double. Right? Let's say I don't want that. I want this display sum to actually to be generated as double and double, not integer and integer. So I want to tell to the compiler, you don't decide which one to create. I'm going to tell you which one to create. OK? For the sum, it's pro there is no problem. But if it was, for example, division, then it would make huge difference. If I call the double for two, two integers, then the division would be partial, whatever. So for any reason, I want to make sure that what is called over here is actually the double one. If that is the case, then I can actually do this. I can tell I want the double version of this to be called. So you can specify in front of the name of the function which template I want to get created. By doing this, you are literally telling to the compiler, don't try to recognize what is the function. I want that to get created. Obviously, compiler is going to create the double version, and A and B are going to get casted to double. Pass over there, and you're going to have a double return into C. Are we good with this? Any problem with this? 
So we can use the same feature to specialize a template. How? I can go up here and say, hey, this, although it looks like a function, but it's actually a template. And I don't put anything over there. Which means, don't try to search and see what is the type and replace the type or whatever. Okay? This is a template. But call this when display sum is character. How do I do that? Exactly the same way that I forced the other one. So I'm going to say, if anybody wanted to use the character version, please use this one instead. OK? And, and that's going to be the case. And why is it giving me an error in here? I have no idea. Why is it giving me an error? Template. No, this is good. No, it's good. So, yeah, I, I know. I like it's just uh, sometimes intelligence is a little woohoo. Okay, it's not very intelligent. The intelligence <laughs> that intelli becomes anyway. So that's what <laughs> that in intelli goes to. Okay, so so yeah, display some. So we say over here character, and then what happens over here? Now I'm telling you, telling the thing. Okay, make the other one double. Obviously, if I don't make it double, you know the integer is going to get called. And for this case. Because it's character and character, the character will be called. But if you want to, you can you call the specialized version of it too. Are we good with this? That's called function template specialization. Problem with this? Yes. It becomes it becomes tiresome. It, it, it takes all the polymorphism out of it, the joy of polymorphism out of it. Yeah. It's obvious, yeah. But if you're not sure, if you're not sure, yeah. If you're not sure, do it, sure, no problem. But usually you're confident enough that you understand the language properly and you know. Maybe after 20 years. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so that's the thing. So, so uh, yeah, if you do it that way, it's, it doesn't hurt, but yeah. Then you can have template type, type name this and that. You can have two types here. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the specialization, you have to double, comma, and int. Come on. So you can have many types in here. It doesn't matter. It's in, okay, so you can extend it to, to how, as, ma as many as you want. But that's not the, like, the more you do, remember. It's like, remember I told you that, like, if we have one bit, we only have two different possibilities. When you have two bits, now you have four different possibilities. So when you put two over there, then you have to think. When you put three, you're going to have eight different scenarios coming out. Don't do that. Try to stick. Sometimes you really need to couple two things. That's your workshop 10. We'll, we'll show you that it's needed that way. But sometimes you, you don't. Okay. Are we okay? All right. Another thing that I have to mention. Let's go back to IPC 144, the way compilers work. Or I think at the beginning of the semester, I showed you how the compilers work, didn't I? With a picture, did I? I didn't? I did? How compiler works? No? Seriously? Let me just bring it up over here. I should have it somewhere. I think it's a PNG thing. I go to archive. Compiler. Wow, 50 workshops gave up. Really? OK. Uh, I 
Am I at the wrong place? Yes, I am at the wrong place. Sorry, just a second. Ah, there we go. Copy, and I'm going to paste it right over here. I think I mentioned this before. Did I mention this ever? No? This is how compiler works. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so let me tell you how compiler. This is uh, something, uh, an IPC 144 thing that we talked about. But I created it at the uh, beginning of a semester to mention it to everyone. So, so what you see right now, let's say the name of the f first file is 1.cpp, the second one is 2.cpp, 3.cpp, and main.cpp. So the way this, uh, the way this uh, thing is being compiled would be something like, would be something, how do I put it? It's displayable in both. Uh, would be, let me do it like this. So, the way that is being that the compiler command would be something like this, would be like this, something like G plus plus one dot CPP, two dot CPP, three dot CPP, and main dot CPP dash o o project whatever. Okay. Does that make sense? Right. So essentially, I am compiling one, two, three, three, and main, and I do create a project thing. Are, are we okay? So, the, so that's what it's going to create. When you do something like this, when you write, when you pass one, two, three, four files to the compiler, you're actually executing five programs. You are calling the compiler four times, and you are calling the linker one time. Okay? So when the compiler is running, at the compilation time, okay, the very first thing that's going to happen is this. So the compiler essentially does this. So compiler only compiles 1.cpp and doesn't know anything else exists. 1.cpp gets included. And actually, the compiler doesn't do that. My apologies. My apologies. Compiler compiles this. You never mention dot .h. Dot .h is written inside the code of CPP. Because it's copied and pasted inside the code of this, the, compi the compiler essentially is compiling the dot .h inside the CPP file. Are we OK with this? And the object file is created if there are no syntax, syntax error in there. And the same thing happens over here until it comes and reach to 3.cpp. So when it comes to compile 3.cpp over here, when it comes to compile 3.cpp over here, all right, two more things are included over there, right? Correct? So 3.cpp is using some of the functionalities of 2.cpp, but the compiler is not compiling the .cpp itself. So what happens over here, in 3.cpp, you are being promised that there are functions that are going to come later, translate their function calls into the machine code and put it in here. So, the, so if I have a function call from 3.cpp, the function call will be translated. It's not going to get called. It's like I tell you, you have problem. There is a tutor down in the learning center. Everybody's happy. No compilation error. But when you have a problem, you're going to go down there, see if the tutor is there. If you're there, you're still happy. No compilation. But if the tutor is not there, what are you going to give me? You're going to give me a link error. 
you're going to say, hey, you promise at compile time that there is a function down there in a test center. But when I link them together, I couldn't find a tutor. OK? So that will happen. So when it compiles over here, it actually, uh, you promise something, but it doesn't. Are we OK with this? And look at the main. Main is using everything. And because main is including 3.cpp, unintentionally is including the header file twice. Because once it's being included in header, and se the second time it's being included in here. That's why I always say never include a header file inside another header file unless you have to. And that's why you have safeguards inside the header file. Because you're going to have multiple times inclusion without, sometimes you have no choice. You have to do it. And that's why we have safeguards. Are we OK now to this point? So do you use safeguards if it doesn't compile two times? No, the that's, you're t essentially telling to the compiler, define this token. So you, and you make that unique by using the name of the file and adding the namespace. You say, if this is not defined, continue compilation. And immediately after that, you say, define it now. So it goes through it. The second one is saying, if it's not defined, continue. Because if it's defined, it's not going to get compiled. So that's what it is. So an IPC one for, for knowledge that we gained in here. Are we OK down to this point? Now, what's the problem with header file, with, with modules and templates? What, let's say I want, to, I want to put that display sum of mine. Let's say I want to put this display. Let's say I want to put this display sum of mine in the utils. So you can, I can reuse it everywhere. So I'll copy all these, right? Where is the other one? Oh, I copy these two, right? I'll go to utils.h. I'm going to add there the prototypes, correct? That's the prototype. And then I'm going to go back to utils.cpp. And Yeah, I'm going to go to utils.cpp and add the body, right? Any problem with this? Like any module, the prototypes are in a header file, the body is in here, right? Now let's go back to our compilation dilemma. <laughs> so let's say 3.cpp just included the header, and this 2.cpp is utils. So I have the body of the templates in here and the uh, prototype up there. Where the display sum is called in 2.cpp, correct? Is it called in 3.cpp, in in correct? In 2.cpp, display sum is not called, correct? So when this is being compiled, it's going to say, this is the function call for a template. It goes over there, and the only thing it generates is its prototype. There is no body. Compiler doesn't know how it's, how it's compiled, because it's not compiling two. It's compiling three. It only generates the prototype, correct? And when 2.cpp is compiled, because this sum is not called at all, nothing will get generated. So when the link time reach, reach, get, gets to link time, what is it going to tell you? You gave me the prototype, but there is no body for it. Because of this fact, templates, unlike regular modules, a template module is only one header file. There is no prototype and things separate. Everything must go in a header file. Otherwise, the compiler doesn't know how to generate it. There is no logic available for it. Because of that fact, if I want this thing to actually be in a module, I should take the whole damn thing and put it entirely in utils. Now I'm good. Because now the compiler, and do I worry that I have many versions of it? No. 
because compiler is generating it itself. It's not like I'm adding it somewhere, right? It knows how to deal with it. Does that make sense now? All right, goody, goody. So now we can actually continue with the rest of the stuff. So remember, template modules, only header files. There are no CPP files for them. All right. Questions? Suggestions? Okay, one thing I want to ask you to do, please go study templates. See if it's, if a template, uh, if function template specialization is actually supposed to be taught in OB244. I don't remember. It's your responsibility to read it. If it is mentioned inside the notes, it's going to come in final. If it's not, you won't have it. Okay? <laughs> so I don't know if it's, if it's mentioned or not. It's not there? You didn't see it? <laughs> it's not there. It's not. Don't trust him. Go read it yourself. Okay? <coughs> but overloading, we know it from, the, from day one. So I can overload. But I don't know. I'm gonna, when I'm designing the test, I literally bring up the notes and I make it out of that one. Not the quizzes. Test. Okay? And by the way, get ready for short programming quizzes, okay? So I'm going to give you a quiz, and I ask you to have a small little sh program, okay? And it's make it or break it. I'm not going to go into details and give you partial marks for it. I just want to see if you do something, can do something very simple, three lines of code, ten lines of code, five lines of code, if you can do it or not. If you do it, you get full mark. If you don't, it's zero. There is no partial marks for the, those quizzes, okay? And they're all in the lab. So we have, I think, two labs left. Oh, shoot, you have one left. I did not know it's a holiday Friday. Yes, oh, exactly. Uh, <laughs> yes, OK. All right. <laughs> all right. So we'll do it once. Or I'm going to put it to do it at home. And I'm going to give you, like, 45 seconds to write it. So by the time you're going to look to what to write, the time's going to be over. And if you know what you're doing, it takes 30 seconds to so have 15 seconds to spare. Okay? Something like that. Very simple code. Very simple code. Okay? Now, next step. So this one's got to be specialization. So in here, I'm going to say uh, D, uh, that is function template specialization. Specialization, yeah, whatever, dot CPP, all right, let's get out, we don't need this, we don't need this, oh, we don't need this, well, I'm putting it in there, don't think that you need that display sum in that utils thingy, it's only for notes today, don't copy that please into your project, okay, it has nothing to do with Go. Thank you. Uh, in the last one, we are Give me line number. 35. Mm -hmm. We are creating a function to allocation. In 36, we are creating the address of okay. that. We are in 38, we are creating allocation for that new mm -hmm. spaces, and we are returning it in mm -hmm. 42. Because the function is ending, res is going to be deleted. So Who we says do so? res will be deleted, not the memory. Yeah, the that uh, variable that belongs to this yes, function. Yes, 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 yes. Oh. So we don't need to call again delete. Not to it's not to you don't need to call it. You need to call delete for this uh, function. In main, we are calling it. Yeah, in main, you have to delete. Yeah, and but here, here, no, you can't. Do if you delete it, you ruin everything. We are everything. not going to say it. Yeah. yeah. So that was a little. So confusing. that's many functions do like this. For example, in C, when you open a file, what do you do? You um. write file pointer fptr is equal to f open yada yada yada. There's dynamic memory allocation over there. Oh, okay. And when you say f close, you're actually deleting it. Yeah, th that was a little. Yeah, it, that's so. that's what it is. So these things happen from the beginning of. Are we good? Yeah. All right. Now you can sing for us. No. <laughs> 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 okay. Later. <laughs> Later. Okay. All right. So we're good, right? 
Uh, we're okay down to this point? Obviously, in the explanation of this template over here, I'm going to do something like this and explain over there that it's dynamically allocated and the value that, oh, not there, to the bottom. In, down here, when I'm actually writing the, the specifications for this template, I'm going to write that this is going to get deleted. So, so the person who's using this knows that they have to delete the thing. It's going to be in the, so returns dynamically allocated memory must be deleted by the caller function. Something like that. Good? Are we okay? So returns DMA and must be deleted by caller. Something like that. So when they actually go on it, it tells that it returns dynamic memory allocation. Okay? Are we good? Shall we continue? We shall. All right. Okay, so... Okay. Um, okay. Uh, let's get rid of these. We don't need the. Uh, do we need them? Sure. Let them be just in case. So I'm just going to collapse them. <clears throat> I have these two classes. I'm going to collapse them. Am I collapsing them? Yeah. Actually, let me let me just create a new one. Forget about it. Let's say I want to create a record to have a few things in it, like C. You can still do that in C, but not everything has to be a class if you don't need to. You can create a record, right? And let's say I want to, sh to keep uh, people's possession. So if I want to hold somebody's like to see what do you possess, what do you have? I have a watch. I have a bottle of water. I have a laptop. I have a wallet that is in a very unsafe place. Uh, things like that. I have glasses. I have cell phones. Okay? So the very first thing, I is there. What is I? My name, correct? So if I want to create a, a class that holds possession, definite, uh, a structure that holds possession, I'm going to write over here struct <coughs> possession. Okay? I had to Google the, the spelling the, in the other class. <laughs> I didn't know it's actually spelled like this. But anyway, so, so struct position. So the name of the owner is fine, right? So in here, I can actually say something like character M owner, let's call it, and say what, 128, something like that. Good? OK. Now, how do I mention pos possession? Laptop, watch, hat. These are not anything that I can, there is no inheritance that I can actually, <laughs> there is no inheritance that I can actually go with, right? Like, I, like, yeah, if I had some kind of an, like, object and everything was inherited from an object, then I would put an object over there and go with virtuality and all the stuff, some abstract base class. But I don't have it. There is no such thing. I want to hold any type of position in here. What do I do? I create a template. So I'm going to write over here template type name type. And in here I'm going to say type m possession. Whatever you possess. Right? 
So now I can create a structure for any type of possession, for a laptop, for anything I want. Okay? Yeah. I knew that I didn't want to delete that thing, but I did it. So, <laughs> so let's go back in that thing that I had. Where was it? Um, Yeah, I'm going to bring this back. Right? So, so I have class display bulb, I have class container and class mark, right? I have something like that. So those are two classes that I have. Now, if I want to create an instance of that structure, for example, let's say for a test, I want to find the I want to have I, I know a test has a mark, so the position of a test is a mark, right? I want to create a possession structure for a test that has a mark. How can I do that? With function templates, it was easy. You write the function without specifying the specialization that, that my friend over there wanted to explicitly use it. You can actually write the function, and from the signature, it can find out which template to use, correct? Classes don't have signatures. I write over here possession. Test. And I want this test to have an integer as its possession, whatever it is, its mark, right? How do I give signature to this? Oh, why did this ITION? Okay, so, correct? Yeah. So, how do I do that? You specialize it. So, templates can only be specialized. <laughs> you cannot have a regular template creation. Because it doesn't have a signature, you have to enforce the signature. So, if I want to have like that, then I'm going to say over here, this is a position of integer. So now test has an integer in position. And then I can have over here possession and say mark. And actually, that should have been a test. <laughs> mark and set the mark for test. And in here, I'm going to say integer and I'm going to say. Uh, account, actually double account for money. So an account has a, so now I can create different instances of a class and enforce what the type is in there. That's the easiest, like most simplest class template that you can have. We're going to go with a fancy one today too. So I said, I'm going to teach you voluntarily the thing for, for uh, class templates. And you, if you want, you, you don't need to come. I, I lied. I'm going to teach it anyway. But, uh, but, but uh, for three, four, five, you're going to use it. You're not going to use it for a thing. The good thing is that it enforces the template knowledge for you so you know what's going on. So that's, I said, so that's what you're going to well, You're going to use actually that one in, a, in the, uh, in the, um, in the uh, in workshop 10 for templates. You're going to use that. And as you were saying, I can have the possession to be like this. Um, how did we have it? Give me a second. Uh, let me pause it. I so, so this is the first version of the thing. So I'm going to say uh, e uh, simple class. Template, okay. So we could have something like this instead of having. Oh, there's, there's nothing here. Okay, so I I I can have something like this. I can say over here, uh, struct possession.
and in here I can say type owner and type uh, possession. So M owner and M. Okay, so uh, uh, ty sorry, ty uh, in here I'm going to call it owner type. And this one I'm going to call it possession type. So I know which one is what. Then I'm going to say over here template uh, uh, type name, owner type, type name, uh, possession type. Something like that. Okay? Now I'm binding two things together. And if I want to create an instance out of it, I can actually do something like say, uh, uh, possession. So what? What? Let's uh, say container. Let's the container only has a value over here, right? So I want to say container has material in it. Some. Um, so it says uh, container. Uh, so container has some maximum value. Let's say I want to. I want to say uh, the position of a container is the the amount of material it has inside. So in here, I'm going to say it's a container and a double. And in here, I'm going to say uh, container material, OK, or container uh, level, how much I have uh, uh, material inside the container. Now, when you do something like this, the first element of Gantt level will be of type container. And the second one will be of type a double. And you can use it accordingly. Are we, are we okay with this? So that's the simplest type of thing that you can have. So, so, so now I have, can have over here container C um, 200. And then I can uh, write over here, for example, count level. Uh, dot uh, uh, m owner will be equal to c, and then I'm going to say count level uh, possession something like that. Oh, yeah. Are we okay with this? All right. Questions? Suggestions? All right, so so this one is going to be class template f simple <clears throat> so how do we create a template as a rookie, a person who, like a novice programmer who wants to do some programming and learn how things work, how we're going to do it, okay? The best way of doing it is to design what you want to design with a primitive value, and then change, generalize it, converting it to a template. Let's say I am sick and tired of arrays in C language because they don't know what their size is. If you exceed their size, you're going to get out ruin the memory and all the good stuff. I want to have a smart array created for myself. So to start with, I'm going to create a double array for myself. So I'm going to create, build, add, a uh, new item, a uh, new class actually, add a class. And I'm going to call it double array. And it has a header and a CPP. Please add the safeguards and stuff as, as needed. I'm just going to do it to show you how things are. So I have a class double array. So when I have a class for, for uh, the double array class over there, what, uh, what needs to be done to make, the, uh, to make this an array that actually works and everything is fine and dandy? We know that an array is essentially a pointer pointing to a piece of memory. So in here, I'm going to say double pointer, and I'm going to call that data. So that's the data of my, of my array, correct? 
I'm going to immediately add a size to it to just remove that weakness from the array. So immediately in here, I'm going to say size t, right? And I'm going to say uh, uh, size. So that's the size of the array. And done. I have no problem with size anymore, and it works perfectly for me now. I can actually hold it whatever I want. OK? Now, uh, obviously, can you create an array without a size? No. So my array can only get created with a, a constructor that accepts one size. That's it. Right? So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to create double array. And I'm going to say over here, size t, size, right? And I'm not going to put any default value of anything for it. They can put any size they want. And because I'm lazy and I want to give you something to do, rule of three, you're going to take care of it yourself <laughs> at home, please, OK? And I'm going to create a destructor to make sure life is uh, OK and I don't have any memory leaks. So that's that one, OK? Immediately, I need to know what is the, oh, uh, yeah. Uh, did I do anything wrong in here, you think? What? Virtual, yeah. Who said virtual? You said, who said, well, said virtual? You said virtual? You know him? Two one percent for the final. Virtual, OK? Because I gave it to the other class, I have to give it to you too, OK? And all the others who didn't say virtual are looking at me in a very angry, mean way. I need to know what the size of the thing is, so I'm going to go size t, size, and I'm going to make it a constant. So that's going to tell me, that's going to tell me what is the size. Uh, I need to gain access to the elements of the array, right? And that's done with an index overload. So I need to get access to double pointer uh, operator, operator. Uh, and I'll go like this, and I'm going to go size t index. So that's going to return that one. And I think I'm, I'm good. it's good enough for me to, 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 to start actually coding. So let me bring this one up too and split it in two. And I'm going to ask the lady who's sitting back there or the gentleman over there, can you read that? A little bigger? OK. <laughs> OK, all right. So let's create the constructor. So we create the constructor by simply, first of all, if somebody says size 0, I'm going to say shut up. If size is 0, OK, I'm going to make the size 1. <laughs> Right? So don't, don't give me a zero size. So I'm going to say, or, or, yeah. And the next thing we do is very simple. M data will be set to new uh, double, right? M size being set to size. That's it, right? And we set everything to zero right off the bat. OK? So another good thing that my array has is that when it gets created, I'm not going to have garbage in it. It will be garbage, but it's safe, empty state. Everything's going to be zero. Are we good? So see, it's right out like with two or three lines of code. It's already smarter than the arrays that I have. Obviously, I'm going to need the destructor over here. And with no question, when it's done, I have to delete the M data. Do I need to set the size to zero in the destructor? Do I need to set m data to null? No, it's dying. Who cares? Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, returning size is two seconds. I'm not going to waste my time on it, right? I just want to return the size, right? That's it. And uh, for uh, re for the uh, for the operator, what do I do? I want to make it in a way so people cannot get off the limit of the array. 
So what do I do? I'm going to say return. So I have to return the, re return the reference of the index, right? So I'm going to say return the reference of the index, but mod it to M size. So what happens when I do that? Let's say size is 3. If it's 0, it becomes 0 mod 3 is 0. 1, 1 mod 3 is 1. 2, 2 mod 3 is 2. 3 goes off limit. 3 mod 3, 0. Back again. So no matter whatever they put in here, it's going to be between 0 and 3. They can't get out. <laughs> okay, so there. But like some people say, wow, that's good, so the program's not going to crash. Actually, that's one of the worst things you can do because they're going to make a mistake, and they're never going to find out what's wrong with it because they cannot pinpoint where, what, you know? So anyways. Well, we'll change that. So let's write the main for this. Hello. How are you doing? You're perfectly on time. All right. <laughs> so where is my? OK, I don't need that. Utils, let it be. I'm going to include the array thingy. So include double array. So let's create a function that displays the array first, OK? So I'm going to write over here void display array. And in here, I'm going to say double array reference. It has to be constant, right? Const, because I just want to display, correct? So I'm going to say double array. And in here, I'm going to say uh, D. Do I need to pass the size to it? No. Beautiful. It knows what its own size is. I don't need to worry about it. So in here, I'm going to say if, uh, um, I'm going to say for integer i set to, sorry, size t, i set to 0, i, I less than d dot size, and i plus plus. And let's make it comma separated. So I'm going to say if i is 0, not equal. If i is not 0, uh, print a comma, right? Something like that. Yeah, print a comma. And uh, I need include using namespace std. So that's that one. Then after this, I'm going to say c out uh, di, right? So why am I getting an error? Didn't I overload that? Can anybody tell me why am I getting an error? And that's not and that's not intelligence being stupid this time. Yes. What is the return time? It's double. One percenters. You tell me why I'm getting an error, you get 1% for a final test. Your 79 can be 80 with that. Because the function is not constant. And the object is constant. The reference of D is constant. This is not constant. It cannot call a non-constant thing. OK? So I need to overload it with a constant thing. I need to actually have something like that written. But in here, I have to say const double yada, yada, yada. And this is const, which means I cannot change anything in here and implement that. The code is essentially the same thing. It doesn't make any difference. But the other one guarantees that you cannot set the value to anything. So in here, in main, I, that works. But if I say over here, the i is set to 2.3, then I'm going to get an error. So it makes it perfectly safe. Now we're good. Are we OK with this? Are we OK? Next thing, now that I have this case, let's make the index thingy uh, intelligent. 
Okay, so what I'm going to do over here, I'm going to say if it's constant and I'm not supposed to change the object, I'm just going to loop on myself. That's that one. But for the other one, I'm going to say if the index is greater than or equal to m size, what does it mean? It means I am going off the boundary of the array, right? Correct? I'm going to say resize to index plus 1. Done. And in here, I don't need to do that anymore. Resize me. Change my size. So, yes? If index is 1 and then resize is 2, then you're good. Nothing happens. It returns. It means you are within. So index is 1, array size is 2. But when array size is 2 and size is 2, then there is no 2 index. Then it's going to do 2 plus 1, resize it to size 3, and we're good. Right? And resizing, we know it's a breeze. Like you can do it in 3 seconds. And for now, I'm going to make it uh, a, a private thing. So uh, it cannot be... Uh, uh, called by anyone else by other than me. So in here, I'm going to say void resize. And I'm going to say over here size, t new size, right? That's what I want to do, new size. And, and I'll do resize. So, And you know I hate returning void, so I'm going to say double array reference. I'm just going to return this so I can, if I need to do some casting and stuff, I'll, I'll do it. So in here, I'm just going to say return this. And um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use the exact same method that I used for the other one, <coughs> which means uh, first I'm going to have to create a new size for whatever it is, even if it's smaller. So that I'm going to write the resize in a way so in future, if I want to shrink an array, I can do that too. So I, it has 5,000 elements. I only need 100. I can shrink the array to 100 to use less memory. I want to do that. So right quickly over here, I'm going to say double pointer temp will be set to new double. And in here, I'm going to say it's going to be a, a new size, right? Create as the new size, but make sure that new size actually is not zero. <laughs> we know that if, if somebody says zero, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to return a one. To make sure that it, it act, creates at least one. Okay, we know it cannot be negative because it's size t, so that's that. So that's created. Then after that, I'm going to write a for loop over here with a. Uh, so I'm going to have size t i, and I'm going to say for i set to zero, and i less than m size, and i less than new size. Depend whichever, whichever is smaller, I have to stop. If size is smaller, I have to go up to size. If new size is smaller, I have to go. That's the amount of things that I'm copying to make sure that I'm not going to go anywhere wrong. So I'm going to go I++. Plus plus. <laughs> and simply say temp I is set to, what is it set to? M data I, correct? Are we OK with this? Everything's copied. Life is beautiful. I delete uh, the M data. I make temp uh, M data. To point to temp. So this is a good review, guys. And m size, m size will be set to new size. Correct? Nice. Now my array, if you put more, it just makes it makes itself bigger. So <clears throat> what I can do in my main is a simple thing like this. I can say, for example, uh, double array. Uh, D, and I'm going to put over here 5, and I'm going to say 4 uh, size T set to size T I set to 0, and I less than say 7, and I plus plus, and I'm going to say D I is set to 1.1 1 .1, uh, multiply by, multiply by, I plus 1, something like that. I want to put some double values in it, right? 
Are we okay with this? Are we okay with this? All right, so it's going to make it seven. And then <clears throat> I'm going to print that. So I'm going to say display. Display array C. I don't need to send the size. I don't need to do anything. It just knows it by itself. Let's make it four. So it, it does a little bit of that. So when I run the program three years later, when it compiles and gives me all the nonsense errors, what is the error over here? It says, uh, and L undeclared something. Display some and L. Uh, shoot. Using stupid compiler. Using name the size. STD. Okay. Run it one more time. Seriously. What is this one? Oh, it's okay. Let me take those things out. I don't want to. I don't want to have those things in here. I don't want to debug those things. OK, one more time. All right, so as you see, it's actually going 7. So it's spring temp. So I have a, uh, what should we call it, uh, an array of 7 doubles. Are we OK with this? Right? So <clears throat> you want me to walk through it? I don't want to waste time. It's This is. Classes with resources and dynamic memory allocation. Okay, so please go home and 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 walk through it with F10, F11. It works. I don't. Yes. Sorry, can you resize the array and to have like your original array was three and you resize it to five? The other two are garbage values or zero? Zero. 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 Because I did it. That, did it? Did I do it? Did I make it zero or make it garbage? It is garbage. Now I'm. Now it's zero. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay. Yes. So zero. All right. Are we okay? Are we okay? Are we okay? One. Good two. Hmm? Okay. So that's that. So essentially, what 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 I'm saying is, so to test what you were just saying in here, I'm gonna say, uh, and first of all, let me go to new line in here. C L and L. In here, I'm gonna say D twenty is set to 20. Okay? So what's going to happen is that it's going to actually have zeros all the way through, and the last one's going to be 20, because it resizes to that, right? And everything in the middle remains zero. Are we okay with this? A good thing is, seriously, it's really good. Like, like this, it can have a, a beautiful array. So now we want to make a template. I want this to be an array of anything, not only doubles. So what do I do? Instead of a DBL array, I'm going to create a module for a template. A module for a template is what? Only a header file, correct? So I'm going to add a header file, new item, and I'm going to make it uh, a header file. And let's call it array.h, because it's any array, not only a double, right? The next thing I do, I'll copy everything in there. Copy this because everything has to be in the header file. And I'm going to copy everything in here, too. Except, okay, so let me copy it, then I'll remove it. Paste, and I'm going to remove that. And now I'll save it. I can actually uh, let those things be, actually. I don't want to I don't want to see it up. I don't want to do anything with them. That's a double array that I want to. And what I want to do over here is essentially change this thing to an array and everything work, OK? So how do I do it? The first thing, I'll change this double array to an array. Not current project, but current document. So everything is changed to an array, correct? All right? Now I'm going to write the rules for how to actually uh, convert a regular class to a template. First thing first. You add template to every single scope because we know templates, template, we know templates, type name, type, templates only affect the scope that come right after. This is not affected with that template. So I have to add them to every single scope. And remember, it doesn't have to be the same name. It can be hee-haw. It doesn't matter. Then I have to change all the types over there to hee which is stupid. 
So I'm going to use the same thing, but it's not a must. Remember that. Don't think if it's not, if it's not, it's going to. So it's going to remain as type. All right? And I'm going to add that type to the beginning of every single scope. This one, this one, this one. Even if that scope doesn't have anything, you have to do it. Even if it's a class forward declaration. It's just a class, name, and a semicolon, right? You have to put a template for it. You have to. Because for a program to work, the compiler has to regenerate everything, even if there is nothing involved in there. OK? So after that template is created, if these are created, we'll start. How do we create a template? How do we convert it? This is how the conversion is done. Number one, what you do is all the In the other class, we had to change this. What do I call the types that are types of interest? Types of interest. All the types that are relative to our template must change to a type. OK? All the types of the template relative to the template logic must change to type placeholder, OK? So that's the very first thing that I have to do. So I'm going to get this type, OK? This double, it's the type of the array. So that has to change, correct? Do I need to change size t? No, any array has a size. What else do I have? Do you see any doubles in here? We'll come. There we go. This returns a double. It has to change. This returns a double. It has to change. Do I have anything else in here that needs to change? No, right? Number two. So there are two steps, but step number two has three exceptions. Number two, because classes don't have signatures for the compiler to know when you say return an array, it, when it recreates it over and over, it needs to know which array to return. Is it a double array? Is it a car array? Is it a train array? Is it an integer array? So you have to add the signature of the template to every class. Add the signature of the template that is type to, let's put it like this, that is type, like that, to all class names. with following exceptions. Exception number one, the class name right after the template. So the very first thing that doesn't accept, doesn't get it, is the name of the class that comes right after the template. That doesn't get it. Number two, constructor names. They are not class names. They are constructor names. So you don't change them. This array, this array will not change. OK? And finally, destructor name. Other than that, signature must be added to all class names. Let's do it. So I'll copy that class name over here. And in here, I'm going to say, this is returning a reference of an array. It needs it. This is constructor. I don't. Constructor, I don't. This one is returning a reference. I need it. Oh, this one, it is a ref this is a reference. Need it. This is a reference. This is a, a reference and a reference. This is destructor. I don't touch it. And done. So the definition of the class is done. Now we do the exact same thing to all the scopes one by one. First, set the type. Uh, this is a class reference. It receives it, correct? This is the owner. It receives it. It's not a constructor name. This is double. It becomes type. This is double. 
it becomes type. Do I need to change anything else? Construct the class names are changed, type names are changed. We're good? Confused? Good? Okay. All right. Next. The good thing is that we're going to do it so many times that we've got to get a hold of it. This is the owner. It needs it. This is the constructor name. Don't touch it. Here, it's creating a new double. That's a new type. Done. Next one. This is the owner. Needs the signature. That's the destructor. Don't touch it. Delete will delete anything. I don't care. This is the owner. It needs it. That's the size T. Has nothing to do with anything. Life is beautiful. Next one. This one is double. It returns a double. That's type. This one is the name of the owner. It needs the signature. And done. This one, it's a double. It becomes a type. This one is the owner. Done. Now we have ourselves a class template. That can be an array of anything. So I'm going to just save this, and I'm going to go back up in my program, instead of a double thing, I'm going to include array. And in here, I'm just going to say this is, oh, and now I have to convert this to a template because it's using a template. I want it to print any type of a thing, right? So in here, I'm going to say template, type name, type. And in here, I'm going to say array type, which means any type of array passed to this thing is going to get printed, to comma separated. Now I'm going to come over here. I'm going to say create a, an array of doubles. And everything else is good. And then I'm going to say create an array of integers. And I can follow the exact same logic for it with absolutely no problem. Where is i? So there you go. So this one's going to be i, and that's going to be i plus 1. Why does it give me an error? Oh, <laughs> thank you. I'm used to so. There you go. Thank you. No, 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 no percentages for that. Okay. Are we good? That's at this point. So now if I run this program, and I'm going to put two display arrays over here for D and I, and I'm going to make this one go up to 10, and this one is going to be 20.123. This is going to be 10, and I'm going to put over here 10. Are we good? We run the program, and we have ourselves two arrays. And it works for anything now. Anything. Why is it up to 10 over there? 1, 2, 3, 4. Did I go that high? Oh, yeah, I went up to 10. I want to make it 5. <laughs> OK, that's good. I just wanted to. Show you that that one is zero. One, two, three, four, five. Because it's D, you have to make it as Oh, it's D again. Yeah. Thank you. That's better. Okay. So now that's the first one, and this is the second one, and I have two different things. And that, ladies and gentlemen, you don't need to do because we have exactly an array in a standard template library. So the array that you see that I wrote. We have the exact same thing in standard template library. If you include standard template library, everything's there. We have array. Actually, it's with lowercase a, I, th I think, not with uppercase. I don't know why. I think that's the case. Yeah. But, and these are very inefficient, as you see. Just imagine, in every loop that I'm doing, every single time, it's reallocating and allocating and copying. It's very inefficient. OK, so array is the most inefficient container template library, OK? You've got to see in OP345, they're going to tell you anytime you want to use an array, use a vector instead. In 345, you'll see what it is. It's much more efficient, much quicker, OK? 
That's it. That's class templates. Easy breezy. Okay? So uh, your responsibility is go study templates and see which parts I covered extra. They are not coming. Which parts are in the notes and I did not cover? You need to know them, even if I didn't teach you. you and another point that you have, you have to tell me what we are going to talk about the next day other than midterm, other than final. So you send me messages on team, the main message, so five people don't do the same thing. So that the next lecture, we, we want you to cover this and that. So things that you want me to cover, you send me a message in the teams, not private message, telling me that, um, uh, and please, don't just do it because you want to hear it again. I have the recording. Go listen to the recording. Really put it over there if you have problem with it. You actually followed the lecture and you had problem with it. Say, I don't understand what virtuality is. We talk about it. No problem. Okay? But please don't just, you know, if you want to just hear it again, you know and you want to hear it again, go watch the recording. Don't waste other people's time. Just really tell me what you need to get covered. And we'll go through it. Questions? Suggestions? Are we good? Objections? No? All right. Have a beautiful day.